Hello and welcome to this video on using the sum and xlookup functions together to create a dynamic sum formula. Now in this example we have a drop down list in cell A1 of the different products that you can see below. Those products are ordered in descending via the December column and that data is in a table named cells. Now that data is in a terrible layout for data analysis, but we're not gonna get into that right now. We're gonna get the job done using XLOOKUP and SUM. Now in this first example, I simply want to sum all of the values, all 12 months for the product given in cell A3. So by using the XLOOKUP function, we can tell it to look for the product in cell A3 in the lookup array of the sales table product column. And then we can tell it to return all of the values from that data range as we may refer to it. Now we're in a table right now and it's going to create that range of headers between Jan and December, which is pretty cool. It's very easy to read, very easy to write. And if I run this function on its own, it's going to return all of those values. It's gonna return a spill range with all 12 values. Pretty awesome, eh? One of the many aspects of XLOOKUP that we love. With that done, I can simply go and add a sum function around it, and that will produce a sum of all of those values. One just needs to change the products in the dropdown of A3, for example, melon, and that will work. And in Excel 365, one can even start typing in that dropdown and utilize that searchable aspect and the sum function is triggered. I love that. But let's just play with this a little bit more. Let me remove that formula because maybe we didn't like the specific range of Jan to December. Maybe we're interested in just summing the last six values. So right now that's July to December. But keeping with this example, let's just imagine that this table may grow and shrink in size, both its height, but also its width. Maybe instead of months, these are days or weeks or some other period that generally may be a bit more flexible than months. But working with this six months idea, I can use the XLOOKUP function as before and I'll look for the product in A3, reference in that column as before. But this time, I'm going to put the return array as the entire table. So that's a little bit cleaner to look at than the range of Jan to December. And it will also ensure that if people add new columns on the end, that it's going to include everything. Now, running that function on its own, as you may be suspecting, that is going to bring the product name as well. And we really don't want that for a sum function or possibly a different aggregation like average, median, or max. But the good news is that Excel has a couple of functions that will really help us out. What we could do here is I could add the drop function to this and I can tell the drop function, if I break this onto different lines, as it prompts me how many rows to drop from the array, I can ignore that because I'm only dealing with one row, one product. But for columns, I'm going to see one. So just to see what this does at the moment, if I run this function, that's going to drop the product name. It will leave us with those 12 values. So we could go up, put in a sum function, and this will sum those 12 values just as before, but now we did reference the entire table rather than a specific range of columns. Now going back to what I mentioned about the six month idea, we could change the drop function to say drop seven, so the product name and the first six months, but to ensure that I am always taking that last six, it would probably be easier to change the drop function to the take function. And instead of dropping one from the front, I'm going to take six from the end. 
I'm simply going to enter minus 6. It would always take the last 6, whether there be 12 periods, 8 periods, 29 periods. It doesn't matter. So pressing enter, that is going to sum those last 6, which in the case of pineapple are these values here which we can rectify by looking at the sum on the status bar at the bottom of the screen. Or it may be easier to check these things by simply going up and removing your sum for the moment and seeing it on the sheet. We can also use the value preview tooltip and then we can go back and put in our aggregation when we're confident that the correct values are being returned. So this video was just showing some demonstrations of XLOOKUP and SUM together to create a dynamic SUM. And we also combined the drop and take functions, which are fantastic for this work to drop or take values from the beginning or end of a given array, of which in this example was being returned by the terrific XLOOKUP function. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up as that helps to tell people that this content is helpful for others. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe so that you are notified about the latest videos coming out at this channel. Take care and I'll see you again soon.